Hi, my name is Fraz Hussain. I'm one of the orthopedic consultants here at the ROH. Uh, I'm a specialist in knee and shoulder surgery and what we're going to be doing is going through a shoulder examination for medical students. Um, this is our, our patient, uh, this is Sarah um, and the first thing you have to do uh, in the exam is introduce yourself. So hi, my name is Fraz Hussain. Hello. Do you mind if I examine you? No, that's fine. Okay. Typical uh, situation or cases that you'll get in the exams are um, things like uh, a frozen shoulder uh, or osteoarthritis, uh, impingement or instability um, and we're going to focus on the examination or more of a general examination of the shoulder. So we're going to start off with, uh, with any examination in, in orthopaedics is to look, feel and move and then move on to special tests. So first of all looking and what you're looking for here from the front is um, general shoulder position, um, just seeing if they're rolled forward uh, or whether in the normal extended position. Um, looking for uh, uh, the, the position of the neck or if she has any um, disproportion on either side. Um, she has got quite prominent sacromioclavicular joints and quite pro prominent clavicles on both sides, but this is, this is normal. So, first of all, looking from the front, and what I'm looking for is if her clavicles are normal, um, if she has any muscle wasting uh, in her deltoid muscles and looking at her, her biceps uh, muscles on both sides uh, and her pectoralis muscles at the front um, and that looks pretty normal on this side. So we're just going to get you to turn face that way. Looking from the side, uh, again we're looking to see what the normal position of her shoulder is um, and also looking at her neck, whether she's got an increase uh, or decrease curvature of her neck. Looking from the back, I'm going to get you to turn and face that way. What we're looking for here is any muscle wasting, any scars um, from previous surgery. <coughs> so you look quite closely um, and what we're saying here is Sarah has an issue uh, with her left shoulder um, but what we're looking for is any arthroscopy scars and they tend to be in this area uh, or laterally here or sometimes at the front as well. Uh, any scars in the delta pectoral groove from previous surgery uh, at the front. Um, Looking for any muscle wasting, now this is uh, the area of supraspinatus which is just above the spine of the scapula or infraspinatus uh, below, uh, what the position of a scapula is, uh, whether it's even on both sides. Now the difficulty in shoulders is there is a lot of moving from front to back um, and you tend to do uh, the majority of, of, of an examination from the back um, but you also want to see if the patient's in pain when you do those movements. So. Um, either have a mirror in front or say to the patient, I'm going to be moving your shoulder. Uh, if I cause you any discomfort, please do tell me, um, as I won't be able to see. Okay, so starting off with palpation, um, what I do is I start off from the back <coughs> and compare both sides. And we're going to start off on the medial side of the scapular border and see if there's any tenderness around there. Um, feel along the spine of the scapula um, and across the acromion. Uh, over to the acromioclavicular joints uh, and the same on the other side. Now with any shoulder examination you should always examine the neck so I'm just going to briefly uh, just do a screening test of the neck so we're going to feel for any tenderness along the cervical spine. Is that tender at all? No. Okay and we're just going to do the movements of the neck so we get that out of the way. You can either do that at the start or at the end but you should always do a cervical spine examination as part of your shoulder examination. So I can get you to look up at the ceiling uh, and down at the floor, and cross to the right shoulder, cross to the left shoulder, call, uh, make your ear touch your left shoulder, and make your ear touch your right shoulder. Now, did any of those movements cause you any discomfort down the shoulder, bring on your symptoms, or cause any pins and needles? No. Okay, fine. Can I get you to turn towards me now? And what we're doing here is continuing with a palpation, just feeling around the edge of the acromion, up to the acrom acromioclavicular joint. Is that tender there at all? No. Okay, across the front of the clavicle, and over to the sternoclavicular joints. Is that tender? No. Fine. Um, the auxiliary nerve um, can become injured um, and that will cause uh, some, t um, some numbness around the, uh, the badge area here and you have to feel for any, t any numbness in that area. Is that normal there? It's normal. Okay, and that feels the same down there? Yeah. Okay, fine. Get you to turn around to the front now um, and we're going to Carry on with the, the palpation, see if there's any tenderness around that area or over the sternocavicular joints. Um, so we've completed the look and the feel. We're now going to ask her to move. So I can get you to turn around and face the wall again. Um, we're going to start off with forward flexion. So if I can get you to raise your arms uh, in front of you, right up to the ceiling, and back down again. Okay. 
And what we're looking for here is um, looking at the general um, scapulothoracic movements and what proportion of the movements is brought on by the um, glenohumeral joint as well as the range of movements that she's got. So actively she can elevate right the way up, um, but if she can't, and it's important to check passively if you can get any further, but again, you don't want to cause the patient any pain, so you say to them, if it causes you any pain, please tell me. Okay, well, she can get right the way up passively as well. We're just going to repeat that elevation. Can I get you to do that again, but more slowly? And you can see at the initial bit of the movement, <coughs> it's, glen it's glenohumeral, and as she gets up further, scapulothoracic movement comes in, and then she moves it right the way up. And as she comes back down again, just checking she hasn't got a hitch, and she's got normal glen uh, um, uh, shoulder rhythm there. On abduction, bring your arms up at the side, bring them right the way up, and clasp your hands together, and bring them back down again. And again, she's got full abduction and elevation, and normal um, scapular thoracic rhythm there. Can I get you to turn and face me now? And what we're going to check here is external rotation. Just get your face forward, <coughs> tuck your elbows in, and just turn your arms out. And what we're looking for here is external rotation. This is typically reduced with a frozen shoulder, any capsular tightness, or osteoarthritis. You start off with a, uh, a zero position, and you bring it out, and in her case, in Sarah's case, she's bringing it out to around 60 degrees of external rotation. And you compare that to the other side, just getting around to about 60 degrees. You can do that actively and passively. Can I get you to turn around and face the wall now? Uh, internal rotation. On this side, just show me how far you can get your arm up the back. And what you're doing here is measuring the internal rotation by marking the centre of the hand um, and then counting it down from the um, seventh cervical vertebra just as, uh, as a measure of how far she can bring it around. Do the same on this side. And this one isn't getting up as high, so she has some reduction in internal rotation on the right side. Just get you to turn around and face the camera again. Um, similarly, you can just assess internal rotation, bring the arm out to 90 degrees, and just seeing how much internal rotation she's got there. And you compare that to uh, both sides, bring that up, and internally rotate. Um, so we've done the, the movements. Um, we're now going to do some special tests. <coughs> and the first of these is checking for impingement. Um, now, what impingement is, is where the, um, underneath the acromion you have a bursa that sits between that and, and the rotator cuff muscles, and that can become inflamed. Um, and the way to um, see if, it if she has got that is, to, is to, to do some impingement testing. The first of these is Nier's sign, which is uh, where you internally rotate the arm. Um, and elevate it um, in line of the scapula. Now, again, just tell her that this may cause her discomfort, um, and just tell me if it causes you any pain as you bring it up. Um, and just elevate it right the way, which is a passive test as you bring it up. Did that cause you any pain at no. all? Okay. Now, typically with impingement, they have a painful arc, um, and it's not painful initially until they get to around about 50 or 60 degrees that causes them discomfort, and it's painful right the way up, until they're passed around 110, 120 degrees, and then they're, they're free of pain. With a high painful arc, um, it typically happens if they've got um, an issue with their cromioclavicular joint as well. Second test for impingement is Hawkins' test, and the way we do that is to abduct the shoulder to 90 degrees and, internal rate, uh, and internally rotate and see if that causes her any discomfort. And what we're doing here is bringing the uh, tuberosity up under the acromion to really squeeze out that, that, um, that bursa to, cause, to see if that causes any discomfort. Is that painful at all? No. And we're trying that in different degrees of, in, of internal rotation of the shoulder um, and to see if there's any point at which it can, can impinge because the acromion can be quite a wide area and it can be different areas where the impingement occurs. Going on to a chromioclavicular joint, if she has any tenderness over there, um, we can do a provocation test, something called a scarf test, which is where you elevate the arm to 90 degrees and bring it across the chest. Um, you should have 90 degrees between the arm and, and the torso, and bring that across and see if that causes any discomfort. Is that painful at all? No. Okay, fine. Um, we're then going to go on to test the rotator cuff muscle. So if I can get you to turn and face me. Um, the first of these is supraspinatus, um, and the way we do that is to internally rotate the arms, elevate to around 30 degrees, and just get it to push up against me. So what I want you to do is to try and bring your arms up towards the ceiling as I push down, and you just feel the difference on either side and she has any weakness. That's for supraspinatus. Going on to infraspinatus, um, we bring the elbows in, 
And uh, what I'd like you to do is to push my hands apart. And we're just seeing if there's any weakness in external rotation. Um, with subscapularis, if I can get you to your arm behind your back, um, and just push against my hand there, just seeing if there's any weakness in subscapularis. Or if they're unable to get their arms behind their backs, put your hands on your tummy, bring your elbows forward, and just hold it there. Does that cause any, any pain? And there's no weakness there either. Um, so that completes the examination for um, a frozen shoulder osteoarthritis or uh, impingement. And what we're going to do now is move on to uh, some specific tests for instability. Now, you do these typically after you've done um, the full range of movements and testing for weakness in the, the rotator cuff muscles. We're now going to go on to uh, testing for apprehension. You may not be asked to do this in the exam um, because it is a quite an uncomfortable test. Uh, so the first thing you do is you have the patient relaxed uh, on the couch um, and just ask them to tell you if they're causing you any discomfort. Is this causing you any problems? No. So the arm comes round into the abduction external rotation position and you just gently externally rotate, making sure you're looking at the patient uh, and if it causes them any apprehension symptoms or discomfort then you stop. You then apply a, a force on the front of the, the humerus um, to try and reduce any subluxation and see if it rotates any further. Um, it's a difficult test to do and you may not be asked to demonstrate that in the exam um, but you should understand the principles behind it. Now what we're going to be doing is some specific tests for instability and the first of these is a sulcus sign. Get the, the patient nice and relaxed, um, preferably in a sitting position. And what we're looking for is um, this area here below the acromion. Um, and what we do is get a nice and relaxed, um, just tell me if I cause you any pain, but try and relax your shoulder. And as you're stabilising the, the scapula and the acromion, you're pushing down uh, on the humerus. Um, and as we pull down, you can see that she's just opening up here. You can see the edge of the acromion there, and this is the area you're focusing on. You can see that quite nicely here. This is a, nor this is a normal um, sulcus sign here. We're now going to look for any uh, anterior translation. So again, I'm stabilising the, uh, the scapula. Uh, and what I'm going to do is just see if the humerus moves forward uh, on the glenoid. So I'm just going to apply some force. Just tell me if this is painful at all. And if it is painful, then stop, because it, sometimes it can be a painful test. So I'm just pushing the humerus forward and back and she doesn't have any anterior translation. Okay. 